Welcome back everybody. Today we're going over the pistol that you see right here on the table and that you guys saw throughout the intro. This is the Daniel Defense DD M4 V7 P300 Blackout. <laughs> There's a mouthful with that, uh, but this is the V7 version. Uh, those all have MLOC handguards like we have here. I believe it's the MFR handguard and uh, the V7s come in a number of different configurations. I have the 16 inch 5.56 version. This one of course is going to be the AR pistol uh, in 300 blackout with the folding stock. They come in a number of different variants of uh, V7 pistols which we'll get into here in just a second as well. Um, but before we get into all the different details of the pistol I want to go out to the range and uh, see what kind of groups we can get out of this because uh, those of you guys who have watched over the years know that 300 blackout has not always been the most accurate cartridge but is it accurate enough for what you want it to do let's go find out time to see what kind of accuracy we can get out of this system here uh, it is stock with the exception of course of the optic which is a primary arms platinum one to eight with the acss raptor m2 reticle in there and then the gemtech the one can out there so this is zeroed for supersonic ammo and at this point, probably 75-80% of what we've shot through it has been supersonic. So we're going to fire some subs here first while the target is nice and fresh because honestly, I don't know where the heck they're going to hit. Um, target downrange at 100 yards. It's a CTK precision rest. First load up is some Gorilla ammunition, 300 blackout, subsonic, 200 grain with the, uh, or excuse me, 220 grain with the uh, Sierra Match King uh, load in there. A lot of people really like this load for subs. Um, so we'll see how this barrel likes it. Alrighty, not the best. Definitely a point of impact shift for sure. Next up, we will shoot some of this stuff here. It's the Hornady uh, American Gunner, 125 grain hollow point round. Let's see how she likes it. A lot of guys look at this sort of like a budget home defense load. I have not tried it in gel, so not sure about that, but people do discuss it that way. Serious point of impact shift. So uh, just to give you guys a kind of a point of reference on that target right there, I'm aiming low left on the top right uh, square. So aim small, miss small. So I'm aiming actually at the corner. On the first group, I was aiming at the center square there, the outer ring, bottom right. And you guys can see that's your point of impact shift between those two rounds. So it's very, very significant. But again, that's subsonic, supersonic. It's kind of to be expected. So uh, next up, we're gonna have some grill ammunition, 110 grain KO controlled rather, if I can speak, controlled chaos. This stuff here is nasty. Uh, I did a gel test of it when I did my grill ammunition factory tour. Uh, it's definitely not something I would ever wanna take to the chest. Good hunting load and bring a blackout in my opinion. So we'll see how this barrel likes it. Last up, we have some practice Fioki 150 grain uh, FMJs. This is the vast majority of what I put through the rifle. I get it in uh, from LAX Ammo, ammo sponsor of ours, and uh, it's affordable. It's to shoot reasonably well. We'll see how it does here for a group. As soon as I said it shoots decently, it shoots terrible. It's almost like I called it. Anyway, it's the announcer jinx. Let's go check those groups out. Again, the first group was those subsonics here. I'm guessing one of these is the same bullet hole, two and one hole, because I'm only seeing four. However, our group size there is not so great. We're at 2.75 inches there with that load. Then we came up here with the Hornady uh, American Gunner Series, 125 grain. Tightened it up just a touch center to center, or about two and three eighths inches on that one. Came over here with the Gorilla 110 grain again, right at about two and a half inches in that group. And then the Fioki was disastrous after I said it shot good. I actually just shot a group of this. I kid you not, I just shot a group of this while zeroing it, this uh, scope combination. 
and it shot an inch and a half. I cannot make this stuff up. Uh, no idea what the heck is going on there. We're just over five inches. Yes, you heard me correctly on that one. Just over five inches on that one. So uh, two and a half, two and three eighths. Uh, again, I would imagine with a load that this particular little pistol here likes, it could shrink that group size down. My guess is, from my experience shooting a lot of 300 blackout, probably looking at an inch and a half to two inch groups in terms of consistent capability. Uh, one reason for that is that uh, 300 blackout when compared to other calibers such as 5.56, uh, etc., just isn't that accurate. Uh, inherently, intrinsically, uh, with the caliber itself, it's not really what it's optimized for, as, as many of you guys know. And then you combine that with the Daniel Defense uh, factory AR trigger. It's a little bit heavier than normal. So this one here on my scale is breaking it at seven and a half pounds. And then typically mill spec is 5.5, 5 to 6.5, somewhere in that range. It's a little bit heavier there. Um, so those things uh, combine with this guy behind it to give the groups here. Um, I've not seen a consistent MOA uh, 300 blackout barrel to date have seen them inch and a half to two inches i bet this barrel can probably do that uh, with the right load now that we've covered the accuracy portion uh, let's get into the details of the pistol itself out here on the front is where we're going to start and work our way back for some semblance of order uh, right now we have the gem tech this is a qd mount for the one can which is the can that you guys have been seeing throughout the video uh, however when you get it in it does come with Daniel Defense's flash hider, which is an excellent flash hider. It's nitrided. It's kind of like an enhanced A2, in my opinion. Uh, it has no uh, ports on the bottom, which prevents dust from kicking up. And uh, I say it's enhanced because it does a little bit better job at flash hiding uh, and a little bit better job at recoil control than the A2 does. But very well made overall, for sure. You could, If you don't want to run the gun suppressed, it's an excellent muzzle device for sure. Uh, moving on back, we do have a 10.3 inch cold hammer forged barrel. These are chrome lined, MP, HP tested. And uh, one thing that Daniel Defense does, which is unique, at least as far as I know, of any other American uh, cold hammer forging uh, barrel companies is that they forge the actual chamber and extension in with the barrel all in one piece to make a very straight, concentric, etc. barrel for optimized accuracy. Again, you're going to back out, in my opinion, not the most accurate uh, out there. However, if you guys have watched my Daniel Defense uh, 556 and 308 videos, you'll see those things are absolute tack drivers. So the technology behind it certainly is good. The strength to weight profile uh, means that it's a little bit fatter back here and then it kind of tapers down towards the muzzle. It's sort of like a uh, Hansen from Ballistic Advantage, Faxon, Gunner, uh, BCM, ELW, but a little bit thicker. Um, again, it's designed for a little higher rate of sustained fire and better accuracy overall with the strength to weight profile. The gas block is 4140 steel and it is pinned in place. That's definitely something that a lot of folks like about Daniel Defense. They build these rifles bomb proof and uh, the barrels are an integral part of that. As I touched on at the beginning of the video, all of the V7 series has the MFR handguard. They have M-lock slots at the 3, 6, and 9 o'clock position, as well as the intermediate positions all the way around. So really, if you want to mount a light and you want it to get nice and snug on this uh, handguard, really the world is your oyster. There's so many options out there for different mounts uh, that will allow you to do that. We have quick detach points at the 3 and 9 o'clock position up front, and then also here on the rear. I should also point out it does ship with this steel QD mount uh, that is MR compatible as well. Um, I've discussed it in other videos, but for those of you that are new, um, all quick detach points, in my opinion, if they're made out of aluminum, which the handguard, of course, is made out of aluminum, aluminum and it has a uh, hard coat finish on there. Uh, if you do a bunch of quick detaches, in, inserting and uh, pulling them out, inserting and pulling them out, I'm talking like hundreds, two thousands, uh, they will eventually lose the ability to retain that as well as a steel one would. So that's why they include that in there, again, just for bomb proof hard use there. Uh, the top of the handguard is T-marked. Of course, it's Picatinny, so any of your lights, lasers, etc., that you might want to mount on top as well. Good to go there. And the MFR handguard on the V7 uses a very, very strong uh, mounting system. So you guys can see these pieces here that all line up on your um, upper extension, and then it's clamped in with four screws that hold it into place. And it also has a little tab there on the right and left side of the upper receiver that it interfaces with to prevent it from rotating either left or right. And of course, these screws, as well as how it clamps on the actual barrel nut itself, prevent it from walking out in any way. Um, I did check these bolts before doing the video and it did come with thread locker on there, which certainly is nice as well, but really, really strong, robust system. And they've been out for years now and I haven't heard any negative complaints on them. 
The upper receiver and the lower receiver on the pistol are made out of Forge 7075 T6 aluminum mil-spec hard anodized uh, material. Uh, on the upper there, we do have the T-marks. On the left side, it's marked 300 blackout, just so you know, so you don't accidentally pick up the wrong one and use the wrong magazines, which we'll get to here in just a second. And then, of course, V7 pistol. Um, we do have Daniel Defense's proprietary polymer dust cover here. Uh, some folks don't like it. Uh, Performance-wise, it's been excellent. I've had zero issues with it. Nothing to complain about at all. Shell deflect so if you're left-handed, you're not going to get smacked in the face uh, with brass coming out of there. And then we have our forward assist, which I personally like as well. Let's get on to the magazine. It does come with a Daniel Defense 32 round magazine. Uh, these have been excellent. I have a full review of these on the channel with drop testing, destru destructive testing, all of those sorts of things. But all in all, they've been very reliable. And uh, just a note with 300 blackout guys, you definitely want to make sure you mark your mags some way, one way or another. Um, separate them from your 556. Make sure you don't uh, intermix them uh, because that can cause problems if you throw a 300 blackout round into a 556 chamber. Sometimes it won't chamber, sometimes it will, and then bad things happen. Uh, so don't be that guy. Disassembling the pistol is pretty straightforward with one exception because we have the law tactical. There's kind of two ways to do it. You can just pull the pins out and then when you go to pull it apart, you kind of have to pull the upper out like that. Or you can fold it first and then pull the little uh, extension piece out, which we'll do that just to show you guys kind of how the process works. The law tactical folder for those that haven't watched the channel, my opinion right now as of today is the best folding mechanism out there on the market for AR style rifles. Um, when it's folded, uh, which we'll do that right now. There's a little button right here. Just press that, folded. It. It's pretty darn secure. It can move. You can pull it out, you can shake it out, but in normal applications, it's not going anywhere. If you had to in an emergency, you can fire one round out of there. However, it will not cycle because this extension piece here is actually locked into place with this lever. Um, so in order to pull it out, you can, for disassembly purposes, again, you can pull it out by the pins and it'll work just fine, but you can pull this piece out and just like so, it comes out. Now this piece is necessary because the extension here, the folding extension, adds a little bit of length to your receiver extension. So that's just making up for it. You don't need any special um, aftermarket buffer spring, buffer, anything like that. All the mil spec ones will work just fine. Then we're gonna put that little guy back in there. Now at this point, you can just disassemble like you normally would and pull your pins out. And I should note here while looking at the lower receiver as I'm pulling it out is that it does have a flared magwell, which I do like. I've pointed that out multiple times in multiple videos. Um, there's really no reason not to flare the magwell. You don't lose any strength and it just aids in reload. So this one has that for sure, which is nice. Um, we talked about the trigger already. It is on the heavy side, Daniel Defense. It, again, they're built to be bomb proof and uh, being on the heavy side is not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, if it gets dirty, whatever the case may be, if you have hard primers, it's gonna ignite them. So the positive there in terms of reliability, I'm sure is what they're going for, but uh, basic mil spec trigger in terms of feel, uh, good clean break, good clean reset, no issues there at all. It does have an ambidextrous safety from the factory. And our grip there is Daniel Defense's proprietary grip. It's nice because it's a little bit more vertical than your standard A2 would be. It does still have the little finger groove there. Some folks like it, some folks don't. Up to you guys. And the grip itself has an integrated uh, trigger guard in there. So it's large and opened up so that way you're firing with gloves, cold condition, anything like that. It does help also if you're just firing normal. Uh, you don't get that little drag on the bottom of your finger if you're going through a high round count like many of you guys probably already know who have done that before. Uh, moving on back, the receiver extension is 7075 T6 aluminum mil spec with a dry foam lubricant in there. Our castle nut is staked, which is nice, and the lot tactical folder itself comes with uh, quick detach points at the rear portion uh, and at the bottom. Now, in this configuration, it does, I should say. The bottom is with the lot tactical, and then that's uh, Daniel Defense's quick detach end plate there on the rear. This particular one comes with the SB Tactical SOB brace, which is great. There's no issues with it at all. The one thing I would say is that it tends to move around a little bit when it's hot. Like today, it's already in the 90s and it's the morning. <laughs> and a lot of days out there on the range, it's been over 100 degrees. So what it'll do sometimes is rotate like that. Now, I left it as is uh, for the review, but I have a number of these. And the way to fix it, in my opinion, is just to add a bunch of electrical tape until you can barely get it on. I mean, you have to work it on really, really hard. 
and then at that point it's not going to move around on the buffer tube anywhere near like what it would do um, but these for those that don't know and are new to you know pistols or ARs at this point um, are not stocks these are braces so it's designed so that you can put your hand through and fire one-handed uh, for folks with disabilities and stuff like that and the ATF has ruled as of right now that occasionally firing from your shoulder is acceptable and does not constitute creating a SBR um, so if you wanted to add a stock to this though you do have to go through the NFA process but a lot of folks like this configuration for that reason because you don't have to so uh, moving on to the upper receiver pull this little guy out here and uh, like I said, T-Mark 7075 has the M4 feed ramps, as you would expect. It does have the dry fill lubricant as it comes from the factory, um, but nothing too fancy there outside of the markings. The charging handle that this one came with, and I've had this pistol for months now, probably like eight months, I'd say, uh, comes with a 47075. T6 charging handle mill spec in every regard. However, if you order one of these now, as you're watching this video, they've changed that. Uh, they now have their grip and rip charging handle, which is an ambidextrous affair. It's a little bit larger, and it also has a gas busting uh, portion on top. So that way, if you're shooting suppressed, you're gonna have less gas coming back uh, through the uh, back of your upper receiver, which is nice. Dating no offense, they're bolt carrier groups. Uh, they make them in-house, full, full auto profile. As you can see here, 8620 carrier, uh, mil spec in every regard in terms of this particular model. They make some other ones. I believe they make a chrome one as well. Um, but good staking there on the gas key, chrome line there in the carrier and the gas key. It's MPHP tested on the bolt and it's made out of Carpenter 158 steel. Um, there's a few other details in terms of tool steel on the extractor and all that stuff that I'll roll in, but high, high quality BCGs. There's not a lot of people out there that are gonna argue with that. Damn Offense is among the best out there in that, in that regard. Just a few other things to touch on before we close the video out. Reliability, this gun has about 1,200 rounds through it, which is why it has all the nicks and scratches that you guys probably saw being rolled in during the photos here. Um, and we've had zero reliability issues of any kind. It does come with an H buffer. Uh, for those of you guys wondering how we're running it, suppressed, unsuppressed, I'd never change the buffer weight. Uh, and we ran supers and subs through it, uh, both suppressed and unsuppressed, and no malfunctions of any kind to report. So. Good to go on that front, exactly what you'd expect uh, from Daniel Defense. Whenever I do anything 300 blackout related, folks always ask about how it will cycle uh, subs and supers. So right now we have subsonic ammunition. Obviously it would sound way better if it was suppressed, but 220 grain open tip match, subsonic stuff. We'll see how it does. Cycles those just fine. Up next we have some Fioki. This is 150 grain, 150 uh, Fioki ammo from LEX Ammo. First one, of course, is still going to be the subs in the chamber. Now supers. Handles them both just fine. Uh, additionally, I should point out, I did request this. They did send this out as a media sample for the review. Um, but, I mean, I've been reviewing Daniel Penn stuff for a while bought a lot of it and uh, there's a reason I requested it because I generally like their stuff. I also like the fact on this one particularly that it has a longer than 8.5 to 9 inch barrel and now there's nothing wrong with a 9 inch barrel or 8.5 inch barrel in 300 blackout um, but if you guys haven't watched my 300 blackout barrel length guide or all things 300 blackout video I don't know how I titled it something like that it's a very popular video here on the channel. Um, I kind of go over the barrel length um, issue with 300 blackout a lot of the marketing material out there says you know it's optimized for a nine inch barrel it's optimized for a 10 or 8.5 all the powder is burnt etc um, once you go beyond that and you don't get anything out of it in my opinion that's absolutely not true i proved it <laughs> with chronograph numbers in that video if you guys go check it out um, so uh, i personally with 300 blackout in terms of how i view these for either hunting or defensive use want to use supersonics with it um, so that extra uh, barrel length does give you some good velocity and that increases of course your energy and lethality which is nice um, it also increases the effective range of the round uh, from a practical standpoint now of course with subs it still is going to stabilize them just fine with the one and eight twist barrel there's no issues there as you guys saw with the accuracy um, so you can run subs all you want the versatility on 300 blackout really is where it shines so i mean you can take down generally speaking, larger game than AR-15 uh, typically can with a 5.56 chambering, again, assuming you use the right round, etc., and the right distance of engagement. Um, but in terms of shooting out at long distance, 300 blackout's not the greatest. It doesn't really shine there. Um, but going through brush, hunting applications, those sorts of things, it does a good job. And it's got a 30 caliber pill, and the recoil is no more than 5.56, which is nice as well. All the components are the same, etc. 
sorry, didn't want to make it a 300 blackout video, but it just kind of went there because uh, a lot of folks, I'm sure, are debating between the 5.56 version of this and the 300 blackout. Like I said, the ammo is getting cheaper as well, which is good. So there is that. The downside of this little pistol here is that it's not inexpensive. Um, I believe the MSRP on this one is like $2,000 on the dot. And then uh, it also comes, I should point out too, in another uh, color. They make it in Millspec Plus, which is kind of like their FDU version. It's cool looking. Um, but so in terms of cost, it's not inexpensive. Of course, street freight is, is going to be cheaper than that. And I will throw a link down below where you guys can pick that up. Um, and over on Facebook, these do go on sale at a few places uh, from time to time. And I post up deals on them. So you can find them definitely less than that for sure, especially with sales and coupon codes and those sorts of things. Um, but it's not for um, the budget minded. It's just not, it's not the audience they're going for. Like I said, this thing is built to be bomb proof really in every way. Um, you'd be able to use it for hard use, duty use, all of those sorts of things and know that you can rely on it. In that regard, I'd say Dating Defense is doing a good job and uh, doing it right there. If you guys have any questions about the pistols, anything like that, uh, that we didn't cover in the video or you want some clarification, you can post down below in the comment section. You can also post over at my Facebook page. As always, if you absolutely need an answer to your question, Facebook is the best place to get me. I respond to all the messages I get over there, whereas on Full30, YouTube, Instagram TV, etc., I don't always see your comments, guys. It's just the way it is with social media interface these days. So. That's pretty much it. If you're subscribed, thank you very much. If you're not subscribed, you like this type of video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And uh, if you are subscribed, you're not seeing about three videos a week, make sure you hit that notification tab or bell, I should say. And if you've done that and you're still not seeing them because of the way YouTube shows videos these days, uh, go ahead and hit the uh, sign up button on my Facebook page or over at my website on mrgunsagear.com. And that will get you added to our email list. I send out one email a week with all the videos of the week and a couple of deals that I find along the way. So if this is on sale, you guys will see it. And that way, it keeps uh, the big tech social media companies uh, from censoring my content and how it's delivered to you as well. So that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it again. And I look forward to seeing all of you in the next video.